I think we can start. And uh, as you remember, last time we offered you the assignment with very challenging questions. So the questions asked you to go through the experiences, through uh, surveying, interviewing teachers, students, maybe e-learning staff uh, members at your institutions to share with you in your national context how they feel about uh, engaging in creating, using, reusing open educational resources, which tools they would use for these purposes, why, and also how emotionally they feel about um, involvement in OER development, uh, how they could explain the emotional relationships between creator of OER and his or her collaborators in the artifacts. So we now would like you to uh, report, to, to present to us about your findings. And we are really very interested in this. And of course, we will use these findings later on as open educational resources because we already see that you use Creative Commons licenses. We will use your presentations for the out outcomes of these virtual mobility sessions. So I see group three is ready to present. The floor is yours. And I would like to see all of you in video cameras as well in the window, or at least as many of you as, uh, as you can. So I stop sharing my view, and uh, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you, Irina. I don't have a webcam, but only a microphone. Um, I am Laura. Um, we can start uh, with um, our presentation. Um, can you hear me? Yes? Yes, yes. OK, thank you. Uh, first of all, um, we have uh, some brief uh, uh, preliminary consideration, because uh, uh, we had the choice between uh, conducting uh, interviews or uh, organize a focus group. And uh, um, we opted for the interviews, um, because the focus group implies AI interactivity and uh, this is not um, suitable for us. For us uh, as a group, because uh, language, online co connection, etc. Uh, nor uh, um, with the interview the people, because uh, they are not available uh, together. Um, secondly, pay attention to the ethical issues. Uh, then, uh, what are the collaborative uh, tools uh, that uh, we use? We use uh, mainly Google Drive to share our presentation and uh, emails. Um, the point number four is uh, the question, what is the main result that uh, we attend from these interviews? Uh, we think uh, um, the main contribution uh, has been uh, towards uh, our reflection. Because uh, the sample uh, is uh, small, uh, did not allow us uh, to produce uh, statistics uh, or uh, to conduct uh, a strong uh, um, quali qualitative uh, or uh, quantitative analysis. But uh, this is uh, useful uh, to our reflection. And also, um, as we say last, uh, last week, uh, to engage uh, our institu institution uh, and uh, to solicit uh, some reflection also inside the institution. Um, these are uh, the people interviewed uh, from Spain, Lithuania, Italy, and uh, uh, from NAN in, uh, uh, in Italy also. And uh, they are uh, professors and uh, they are uh, students uh, and also um, members of technical staff. In, uh, in Italy, we collaborate uh, um, Silvia Micheletta, who is in the group number four, and, uh, and I, to have, uh, sorry, to have uh, a, 
a global uh, uh, interview. Um, from the Spain, ah, um, uh, sometimes uh, um, we have uh, to, ch uh, to choose the, the questions. Danute and I, we choose to propose exactly the long questions viewed in this virtual class. In other cases, the choice is a, a bit, a little different um, choice. This is uh, the proposal of uh, Cristina uh, from Spain uh, that uh, tweets about user and develop of OER collaboration tools, OER philosophy, and uh, uh, OER for learning and teaching. The, uh, she interviewed two, pe two, pe uh, two people, and um, the person number one uh, focused mainly the uh, two points quality and quality of resources and incentives to use OER. Um, because uh, um, the OER are reusable but uh, mainly not modifiable, um, so it's difficult sometimes to use OER. And uh, the incentives are uh, very, very small. Uh, the collaboration is low because uh, it isn't, isn't uh, accredited by the institution. This is uh, the opinion of this person. The second person says that uh, there is a difference, a distance, between the OER philosophy and the institutional philosophy, because the, the OER are suitable for lifelong learning, lifelong education, and the institution mainly focus the formal, the formal learning and the accreditation. Um, then uh, Danute and, uh, and I, we uh, used uh, the uh, long questions uh, proposed in the, this course. And uh, the first question is uh, how to create uh, user engagement to increase reuse and development of your head. The main uh, topic, the main uh, response are uh, focused on uh, sponsorship because uh, uh, it's necessary to have uh, the institution involvement. Uh, about uh, the knowledge, because the people should be informed, uh, uh, so the institution have to propose courses uh, and uh, to um, uh, focus it about the quality with uh, articles, uh, with research, uh, with uh, scientific support. Uh, then uh, there are the topic of needs. Um, because uh, uh, an involvement could be achieved at the department level. Um, not, uh, it's very difficult at the university level or uh, with uh, the great institution, uh, this is an opinion, um, because uh, the in the business case uh, there are uh, many intangible benefits. Uh, what are uh, the um, needs for uh, a university? It's uh, more uh, um, more uh, possible in, uh, in the depart at the department level, uh, where uh, there are a strong sharing of objectives. The, another people, another person, um, stressed the concept of the best practice. Uh, to do mm, together, uh, if I don't uh, if I don't have a teamwork skill. I can't collaborate, I can't develop an OER strategy. This is the second question. Why do you think people hesitate to create and share OER? 
Uh, sometimes uh, is the language, the barrier, because uh, for the non-anglophone countries, it's more difficult to share and to use the OER. Also, uh, the time, because the create OER is an investment. And uh, on the other side, <laughs> there are no rewards. Uh, and nobody pays for uh, OER development, and uh, at the same time, uh, it's not uh, uh, a mandatory task uh, to, to produce uh, or to share uh, OER. Finally, there is uh, uh, the fear of being co uh, copied, because the people uh, fear to lose uh, ownership of their work. And this is a problem that uh, we can see uh, later. Um, the number three uh, question is uh, which tools, uh, which tools uh, allow or don't allow to reuse and uh, modify OER? Uh, first of all, uh, uh, better search uh, engine, uh, specialized uh, engine, search engine, um, can uh, increase the use of uh, OER. Um, because sometimes, sometimes a lot of time is uh, wasted in finding the appropriate resources. Um, secondary is a useful uh, a place for knowledge exchange. Um, a person think this place could be uh, a, a wiki. Um, finally, um, there are a, a need for open source tools. Mm, but there are, in this case, there are different opinions. Uh, maybe technical tools uh, are not very important, but uh, uh, the key competence uh, is uh, the competence in uh, modifying, in uh, assembly uh, the OER. Uh, and um, for uh, one person, at the moment, it's more flexible copyright than copyleft. This is uh, the opinion. Because uh, uh, with the copyright, uh, we have the chance uh, to um, ask for uh, the, 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 the user, uh, the user, and uh, with the copyleft, uh, with uh, the, uh, there are some problems with uh, editors, uh, uh, with uh, non-commercial uh, licenses. Uh, with the knowledge of the license in this moment. This is the actual situation of our university, our editors in this moment. The, the question number four, what context would help users to start collaborating on idea, on idea in early stage? Um, in this case, uh, uh, someone focuses on the tools, wiki, social network, etc. In other case, uh, the, the people uh, focus it on the sponsorship by institution. Uh, there is not uh, there is no convergence uh, in this uh, in this uh, answer. Uh, number five and six. Are the questions about the emotional relationship between the creators of OER and the artifacts. And uh, there are uh, two different answers. In some cases, uh, there is a satisfaction to have created something for a community and auto motivation. In other in another case, one person says, um, says the relationship between 
the creator and the artifact is not an emotional relationship, but is an epistemological problem. I have to appropriate, I have to um, continuously renovate, search, extract my knowledge, so I never leave uh, my OER, and uh, this is the reason for this uh, strong relationship. These are the answers from uh, interviews for uh, me and Danut. Last, um, this is an interview from uh, Nan, uh, and the Nan's perspective is mainly uh, the, the student perspective. Uh, she has gathered the opinion of a PhD student with uh, quite, uh, quite limited uh, experience in using OER, but uh, why? Why this limited experience? Uh, because uh, um, it, no interest in the OER, he is used um, formal education. Uh, he use also a tool like uh, this uh, Omnigraph uh, to, to share, to discuss his ideas, but uh, only uh, with uh, his supervisor, uh, his uh, colleagues. And uh, here, uh, come back uh, a topic we had uh, we have, we have uh, already seen, um, especially because especially the person, the people involved in research activities uh, is afraid sometimes that uh, his uh, or her ideas are copied and don't share before uh, publishing. These are the opinions we have uh, collected. Uh, if our, our group uh, has have uh, some comments from Nan, from Christina, Danuta, please. Or uh, this is this all, this all uh, our presentation. Uh, okay, Laura, thank you very much. I, I would like to ask you. Uh, to comment a little bit, could you please go back one slide? Uh, you mentioned, uh, no, one more please, before the, yes, this one. Uh, you commented on uh, emotional ownership. What was uh, exactly the, the idea uh, about emotional ownership? Uh, could, you, could you elaborate a little bit? Um, well, um, as you can see, uh, we have uh, only some uh, uh, answers uh, because uh, this is uh, a very difficult question. Uh, it's difficult to explain uh, the emotional ownership, uh, emotional relationship. Yes. Um, and uh, sometimes uh, um, the, the, the sense of the, this question uh, is uh, only a, a negative sense. It's perceived as a negative sense, and uh, the the response is, is uh, oh no. If you can see the number, the person number three uh, doing something for the benefit uh, of a community. Uh, if uh, I write, if I create, uh, if I complete an OER for the benefit of a community, I doesn't have uh, a strong relationship, but uh, I develop uh, for uh, for all. Um, but this is uh, maybe an. Uh, I, I think eh, this is my opinion. Mm -hmm. uh, this is uh, an uh, an utopia. I think that uh, the person have to uh, change the institutions, and then the institutions have the um, the possibility 
to um, to to strong uh, uh, incentive uh, the the produce of uh, OEM. Uh, the auto motivation uh, is not. Uh, um, it's not all, uh, I think. This is the, the first step. Then uh, I, I think, but this is my opinion, I think uh, a structured method is uh, more uh, effective. Uh, I understand. I understand. You mean like uh, when we are having some collaboration in a project, we have certain management, we have deadlines, we have uh, responsibilities. Uh, uh, do you agree this is uh, the way when we establish a collaborate, collaborative process, uh, we could also follow some um, process guidelines? Oh. Okay. Um. Well, for uh, this uh, for this uh, course for this uh, yes. event, yes, I had a little knowledge of OER. <laughs> um, in this course, uh, mainly I presented uh, uh, first of all the consideration about the quality process, uh, the quality validation of OER that is new for me. Um, then. Uh, the involvement, the engagement of our institution, because uh, this last assignment, uh, I think, uh, is a bridge uh, to our day-by-day -day activity. Uh, I don't know, maybe there are other topics <laughs> that uh, I will remember later, but uh, um, then uh, we, we continue to receive uh, some answers uh, for these uh, interviews, because at the time it's not uh, enough to receive uh, all uh, the, the, yes. the answers. But uh, this is uh, an engagement uh, of our institution that uh, we appreciate. Okay. Thank you very much. It, it, it was a very interesting presentation. Uh, yes, I think these issues are hitting quite deep. Uh, uh, and uh, yes, I, I agree with Elena who just posted that it, it's, it's a great uh, discussion already being on. Uh, would anybody else from your group would like to add something? Uh, maybe you can already share. You were producing, in fact, uh, OER collaboratively, which is these slides. So <laughs> maybe you can also add something from your perspective, or everything is in the slides? Nana or, Nana or Christina or Danuta, could you? <laughs> uh, could you hear me? Yes, now I can hear you. Uh, I think. Uh, Maybe one question according to our collaboration is, uh, first, uh, we didn't really have a selection of all the questions. Uh, so it's, so you can see from the slide that we don't really have common questions. So even we interview like more than five people, but you will find their answers are according to different questions. So it's a, it's a problem for our group presentation. Uh, the second thing is, I think um, when we try to make interview with other teachers or students, uh, we need to uh, recreate the questions. Because, for example, uh, the reason for me, I didn't really um, choose the complicated questions, which uh, Laura and also the news Christina, they, they selected. Because I think they are more like a research question rather than interview questions. So I choose very simple question to ask how they think, or maybe they don't know about OERs. So I think maybe it's better uh, if we do further collaboration on this kind of interview, it's better we redefine uh, which are the research questions we want to include in the study and which are the questions for the interviews. Yes, Nan, I agree with you. I Therefore, we suggested a, a lot of questions, maybe too many questions. 
some of them sophisticated, really uh, addressing research. Of course, you did not have to tackle all of them. And then in the last slide or in the last portion of the assignment, very straightforward questions and very simple ones. So uh, it's OK. In any case, you did great. And uh, I think the solution is uh, the one that you you interviewed or you addressed people. And now you established thinking path within your cognitions uh, about these ideas. And you are able to choose further on. Thank you very much uh, for your group. It was fantastic. Now let's move to group number two. So we have um, Alvaro, Donatas, Juliana, Ugo, and Ramon. Juliana, uh, could you uh, increase a little bit the volume? Increase the volume of the microphone. We are we. I can hear someone's desktop quite perfectly. I don't know who it is with typing and and uh, uh, Skype messages, but I can hardly hear you. My my microphone is uh, I. Now it's perfect. So the okay. floor is yours. <laughs> Okay, thank you very much. <laughs> so we entitled our work uh, um, to share or not to share with the rest of the world, paraphrasing uh, in some way Shakespeare, because uh, this is the question. And um, we decided to interview um, some teachers uh, from our uh, university. And uh, we decided to involve uh, one student, too. So uh, we have uh, uh, both uh, uh, point of view, the one of the teacher and the one of the student. And uh, we thank uh, uh, all the people who answered, because uh, not all the person we, uh, we asked uh, provided their uh, answer. So, um, we divided uh, uh, the work um, uh, for, uh, for country. Uh, we decided to uh, ask six uh, questions, um, chosen uh, among them uh, you um, suggested. And uh, I personally, in Italy, mm, tried to involve uh, 12 uh, teachers. Uh, most of them, uh, except one, are uh, um, te te teaching uh, subject uh, linked to digital communication or media uh, technology. But only two teachers, uh, uh, as you can see, gave uh, their answer. And between them, um, the one who has uh, little or none knowledge of OER. But I think that uh, the fact that they didn't answer could be an answer to maybe I, I can think so. As a second step, uh, I interviewed two teachers of another university, the University of uh, Ferrara, because I recently studied uh, in, uh, in this uh, university. And they both uh, answered. 
and they both uh, are uh, um, specialists in the field of uh, new technology and uh, communication. <clears throat> this is the work uh, of Ramon. I don't know if uh, Ramon wants to uh, speak. Um, yes. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, well, um, the first step in Granada uh, was uh, to try to interview three teachers of the university, but uh, only two of them answered to my question. And as the same as Juliana, only one of them uh, know, uh, knew um, about OER and this kind of practice because the, the other one didn't know very much about OER and, and this um, kind of uh, open resources. Okay. Um, Alvaro uh, asked, uh, interviewed a professor from uh, uh, Santiago de, de Compostela uh, he, is, uh, uh, he teaches uh, at the Department of Didactics and Organization of the University of uh, Santiago and uh, he is a director of an educational uh, magazine. So uh, we can say he is an uh, expert in, uh, in, in the field. Uh, <clears throat> Donatas uh, invited the two uh, teachers uh, to answer the, the, the questions, but uh, unfortunately one of them answered. So he interview, uh, interviewed a, a student so that we, uh, we can have uh, both point of view. Well, the first question uh, we uh, we answered was, have you ever used or do you intend to use OER for teaching? I uh, got the four, uh, four answer and the, <clears throat> the first person said, I use OER and I uh, personally create a site dedicated to humanistic management I put the the link so if you in the future want uh, to to have a look uh, you you can uh, the same uh, teacher realized uh, a project named post modern alice i provided the link uh, too and uh, they are um, both available uh, in italian and in english the second person uh, answered that uh, he read something about uh, this uh, argument, but uh, he uh, hasn't uh, carefully evaluated the use of OER for teaching. The, the third person said that he never used OER, but uh, he could use uh, without uh, problem. And the fourth said I, that he shared uh, educational material, mm, but not using OER licenses. But uh, he intended to adopt OER in the next future. That's, uh, uh, the, these are the, the, the answers uh, from Italy. While from uh, uh, Granada, uh, Ramon, do you want to speak or? Uh, yes, uh, sorry. Uh, well, the first one uh, told me that uh, he he has used uh, OER, but not as well as uh, he should. He has participated in Abierta UGR, and sometimes uh, he looks uh, for for some information in other on other platforms like uh, Digibook and, and other international open resources. The second one, the second person who don't uh, really know about almost nothing about OER, 
told me that uh, he knows very few things about OER. Um, he doesn't use them uh, for teaching. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Alvaro uh, um, got this uh, answer. Uh, this uh, teacher uh, uses OER in a virtual classroom. He uses a learning object uh, he finds in a repository. Uh, he tries, this is important, he, he tries to make his students aware of the intellectual honesty, uh, insisting on the importance of citing the, the, the source of, uh, of the object. Um, then the OER, uh, he uses not, uh, OER not only in teaching, <coughs> but in investigation. In, uh, in which he, he has intervened. For example, he, uh, he worked in a group uh, called Selle that developed uh, this, uh, this project called Morea, and we uh, provide uh, the, the link. He is uh, the, um, the director of the magazine uh, he himself uh, uh, founded. And uh, we uh, put uh, the link uh, to this, too. Um, uh, regarding the student uh, interviewed by Donata, uh, the question uh, is uh, 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 something different, because uh, you can uh, uh, you can't make the same uh, question to a teacher and uh, to a student uh, we think so the question was have you ever used OER for learning and the student <coughs> the student says that uh, he never uh, used uh, OER and the reason is that uh, he uh, study um, biomedical science, and uh, the teachers uh, encourage to use uh, different kinds uh, kind of uh, resources. But uh, he uh, would be ready to uh, use OER. Question, num question number two uh, was, how to create user engagement to increase reuse and development of OER in collaborative settings, I got the following uh, answers. Uh, the first teacher said that uh, uh, you can use engagement techniques uh, typical of the net. So uh, his project, uh, a postmodern analyst, is uh, an example of how you can realize an open multi-channel and multimedia platform using blogs and social networks as a complement of the tradition, traditional frontal lecture. Uh, the second uh, um, teacher, mm, the less uh, <laughs> expert one, uh, said that he uh, could you could you could use effective example of good uh, practices. Uh, for example, he could become really interested if some colleague show him uh, clearly how to use OER, why they work well, why why to use uh, OER, and what are educational advantages, etc. <coughs> The third uh, um, teacher uh, suggested to, to use uh, a product he himself uh, uh, developed, uh, I, I provide uh, the link, that uh, is, uh, it is not an open uh, resource, but uh, could, uh, could become. And this is a uh, documentary model that combines uh, the advantages uh, coming from tutorials, blog, wikis, uh, and, uh, and forum. The, the first teacher <coughs> answered that is, it is uh, quite difficult to uh, identify ways uh, uh, able to increase personal motivation. He thinks uh, that it could be useful to implement some kinds of workshop uh, and 
collaborative uh, task such uh, as those uh, um, present in, uh, in Moodle. And uh, then he, uh, he said that you can imagine to do collaborative online exercise, but um, he underlined that the main platform and um, PLE offers uh, suitable tools uh, at, uh, at regard. Um, Granada. In Granada, uh, the first professor uh, thinks that it's very difficult to increase the use of these collaborative uh, resources like OER and this kind. Uh, but in the last year, uh, they uh, uh, he, uh, was doing as much as, as, as he can for improve this situation. The OER should be uh, the main source for teacher and student, uh, he said. The second one, uh, who, who was uh, less interested in these uh, resources, uh, told me that he doesn't know. Uh, uh, he didn't know because as a teacher, uh, uh, he has no, no knowledge about this kind of resources but he, he would like uh, to learn about it. OK. Um, uh, Alvaro got uh, this answer that uh, you can uh, uh, improve collaboration, make the, making know their existence, teaching to use them, looking for resources, uh, and same to give example using in a collaborative environment. Uh, that could be the best form uh, to spread them. Uh, it is uh, important for the users of the educational community uh, to know in depth the possibilities and features of the open license. So uh, knowledge, uh, knowledge, the knowledge of the existence uh, is uh, important. Uh, Donatas from the, the student got, <coughs> uh, uh, no, Donata asked the, the, the following question. What does it take that you feel ownership for something? And the student answered that uh, he wouldn't feel ownership uh, for something as long as I'm using material for the right purposes. The uh, third question uh, is, why do you think people hesitate to create and share OER? Uh, I got these answers, uh, mainly because of the lack of knowledge about uh, available techniques and tools. And it's difficult because of high in initial investment costs in terms of time. Uh, there is insufficient IT support if you are not skilled uh, in informatics. And then uh, these teachers underline that uh, there are high costs coming from uh, students' needs uh, when you have to face uh, all their possible uh, problems. So you, you have to spend uh, uh, many time uh, giving answers uh, to, to students. Uh, the third uh, teacher um, says that laziness, uh, diffidence, and uh, formal jealousy towards uh, uh, your own work and uh, the wish to gain uh, from that can uh, is uh, uh, a sort of obstacle to the to share resources. <clears throat> the, the, the first uh, teacher said that teachers feel their work is something like an individual intellectual property. But on the other hand, uh, both students and, teacher <clears throat> and teachers are not so skilled in IT, and the advantages coming from the use of OER are neutralized by difficulty in using them. Granada. Ramon. 
you want to speak? I had my <laughs> my microphone off. Oh, sorry. Uh, thanks, uh, Juliana. Uh, for the first um, for this question, the first <clears throat> inter interviewer um, said, uh, told me a, a very interesting answer. Uh, he said, because we live in a culture of dependency and comfort, and it's easier to use other resources previously made than create new resources and sharing them. In this capitalist world, open and free resources and uh, resources don't move money. And this is important too. I think that this is a very interesting answer to that question because uh, he was uh, very critic about um, the context of the this kind of of resources. Uh, Wills, the second uh, teacher, told me that the teacher don't have sufficient training for working with these resources. Um, and he said too that he also said that that they are from another less technological generation in comparison, for example, with uh, my generation because he's uh, a, a older person. Thanks. Okay, the, the teacher who answered the, the questions uh, to Alvaro said uh, that uh, it is probably the ignorance of their existence and the type of le legal uncertainties about uh, its uh, authorship. So, uh, the student uh, was asked uh, if uh, uh, he would uh, share uh, his ideas uh, and with uh, and uh, answered that uh, he I would share my ideas with students to show them what kind of learning material and what kind of assessments they would be provided and required from university doing certain degree and they could make right choices before filling uh, their application form. The question number, question number four is, do you think there is and why a sense of emotional ownership between the creators of OER and the artifacts that they create? So uh, it's uh, not uh, the same uh, you suggested, but uh, we um, articulated it uh, a little different. They, asked, uh, they answered that um, uh, one person thinks that the relationship between the creator of OER and the created artifacts is the same uh, of the one existing, for example, between an author and uh, his or book, regardless of uh, if it is uh, free or not. Uh, another um, teacher answered that uh, he uh, is not uh, really able to answer. Um, but in such a competitive world, such as the academic one, um, he thinks that it's a right uh, way to feel. And uh, the third said that it's uh, an avoidable way of feeling and that it is part of uh, human nature. And the, the fourth uh, one uh, answered that the sense of emotional ownership surely exists, but uh, he uh, thinks uh, it's caused by a misconception way of uh, feeling the, the um, the, the teaching. They generally think, the teachers generally uh, think that uh, the power of teaching is link, linked to the original ability to transmit uh, content, while uh, he thinks that this uh, power lies in the ability to allow interoperability. For <coughs> uh, this question, uh, only one uh, teacher answered to me was the it was the first one who said I can know it because I haven't created any artifacts yet 
but I suppose that when you create something, there is always a sense of uh, ownership, even though it is an OER work. Uh, it doesn't, uh, it depends on if it is uh, free or, uh, or a commercial work. The second respondent did not answer to this question. Uh, no question from uh, Santiago. While the student was asked uh, to answer this question, how to best express new ideas and innovation, and the student said, I would maybe make a video blogs telling all about my experience, new ideas, and innovations. Um, Question number five, would you be ready to share educational resources created by yourself? Well, one of my uh, interviews uh, said I already do it. I, I, uh, everybody can access the site that's available in English too. Uh, the second answer that he don't he doesn't uh, know enough about, uh, but uh, surely I would like to have some recognition of my work. The third uh, said maybe I would, but I think it's possible to have a minimum of copyright uh, for the use of technology too. It depends on the context. You can think, for example, to give free access to the resource but give a certification on payment in order to refund authors and the technologists. The first uh, teacher says, I'm surely ready to share materials uh, if you are able to always recognize the sources and the authors, uh, not for a sense of ownership but uh, to give reliability and access to the sources. Uh, using open source software can give a standard to the format so that you can uh, share uh, the material, uh, share, save, and use documents on uh, different devices. Granada. <coughs> Uh, from Granada, uh, the first one uh, said, uh, yes, I good. I believe in shared and open learning. And nowadays, it is impossible to deny this reality. I will share them without any problem. Whilst the, the second one said, uh, I wouldn't, probably, because we live in a competitive work and you don't advance in your academic career if you share what you create. There are two different <laughs> answers to the same question, and two different visions of this, uh, the use of these resources. Of course. And uh, um, the teacher from uh, Santiago said that undoubtedly he does it, especially in uh, resources generated in his face, like the investigator. Uh, the link was in the previous uh, slide. And the reason is that the ethical commitment that believes that it has to have the teachers and researchers of public institution for which the investment that society makes uh, subsidizing their work reverts on the own soci uh, society looking for the common good. While the, the, uh, the student was uh, asked uh, where would you share and uh, he answered, I would create a YouTube channel since YouTube, uh, YouTube is very popular, easy access and uh, widely used. The last uh, question uh, was, which tools allow, don't allow to reuse or modify OER? Well, uh, the first uh, teacher uh, said, that the more significant OER model is uh, Wikipedia, because it is a tool of collaborative knowledge, always under development and reusable with no limits. 
The second one said that he has no uh, idea. The third one uh, suggests uh, his, uh, his product, uh, Tagged Boost, in which authors and users are uh, clearly uh, separated. Uh, or uh, he suggests the wiki if you don't want such uh, a separation. The first, the first teacher said that there are many tools in this regard, but the main problem is the access to the source code. code. And they are good all open source uh, tools, while those that are not open can be uh, easily modified, of, of course. Granada. Mm. Uh, the first uh, professor said, uh, I think that there are some platforms that allow more modifications than other. Wikipedia and this, uh, in, in this, in these platforms. Uh, I am studying, uh, he, he, he was uh, studying with uh, this tool right now. Um, he considered that uh, he is uh, still a, a newbie in this kind of resources. The OERs that he used uh, allow uh, allow him to reuse the material, but he can't uh, modify them. And well, the second one uh, uh, said uh, another thing. Uh, she uh, he said uh, that he doesn't use any tool in relation to this OER. Okay. A while. Uh, there, are no, uh, there is no answer uh, from uh, Santiago. And uh, the student uh, was asked, uh, which tools uh, would you use? I would look uh, at people feedback, uh, wouldn't be afraid to criticize myself and focus on improving my bad ideas more than perfecting my good uh, ones. Uh, well, uh, I finally asked uh, something about the way uh, they are or think could be uh, supported. And uh, um, they all agree that the support is uh, essential. Uh, one of these uh, teachers keep uh, the site at his expense and work to it in his uh, free time. Uh, they also um, highlight that the added value of OER lies on the competence, on the structural methodology, and the access to, to information. So uh, thanks to these, um, these uh, answers, uh, um, we can say that uh, um, Searching or there are some uh, critical points, such as uh, searching OER in the internet can be a, a hard task. Uh, in our European countries, uh, only a few academic institutions uh, offer OER, and in our academic institutions, uh, only few people know what OER are. And the OER need to be better known and uh, and classified. And um, we 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 write uh, some uh, recommendations too um, in order to increase the use uh, creation of OER. Uh, they have to be known to everybody, not only to uh, experts, and they have to be supported. But um, this is uh, really the way they are uh, they are taking. Uh, we think so. We have uh, finished uh, the presentation. This long presentation. Thank you, all, all all of you. It it was very difficult for you to to solve so many questions, but we appreciate a lot that you took your time and effort, and you you really seem now to be sure to be certain um, about the situation. I guess at least this is the impression. It was fantastic, really, and. Uh, I think it is worth uh, 
some thesis, you know, <laughs> with more survey participants, with more, fi more data on this, but at least now the structure is here. So this is my impression. Maybe somebody would like to say another word. I know Elena apologized and left. Uh, we have here other teachers and other participants. Feel free to comment because they did a huge job and uh, it is an interesting uh, result. Thank you very much. Thank you. And now let's move on. We already are past one hour time limit and we have still two groups and then uh, your feedback. So maybe the feedback will be short in a, in a round discussion but it is a none, none of the less important for us. So let's move to group number four and uh, fantastic four. Let's see how fantastic you were in this challenging task. And I would like to ask you to switch on your cameras as well. I'm sorry, I don't have my webcam. Okay, okay maybe somebody, Marius as usual, yes. <laughs> so Marius, the floor is yours and, and whom do you have beside you? Uh, okay, I can present my slides and then Sylvia will do her. So the, uh, the answers of one of the great students from Vitotas Magnus University. He finished bachelor and master degrees. So he used open educational resources for learning. And uh, what does it take you that you feel ownership for something? materials which is created by myself, for, for example, presentations, articles, uh, are some kind of, of the final final product which, which I create. Of course, I use uh, some other materials from the internet or, or somewhere else. Uh, who would you share your ideas with? With colleagues of the same teaching or research area or in seminars to gain more knowledge and more experience and how to best express new ideas and innovations. Uh, so the answer is in collaboration and discussion with other colleagues by discussing idea with in the meetings or, or, or seminars or somewhere else. Uh, where would you share it? So it's similar like, like the others people said in, in discussion forums, in face-to-face -face meetings, in chat, and public forums, uh, closed forums, and, and so on. Uh, which tools would you use? So it depends on the idea, but usually it would be free tools such as Google Drive, Google Docs, mind maps, discussions forums, and etc. Yeah. It's very short. Now it's Sylvia. John. Thank you, Marius. Uh, I can't uh, uh, move uh, the slide, so please, thank you. Uh, these are the answers from the University of Pavia, so Paolo Nembri, uh, but uh, he doesn't have microphone and webcam, so I can only read the answer. Um, he uh, ask uh, two professor and a uh, student and uh, uh, an expert uh, technical of the technical staff uh, from University of Pavia to answer this question. Um, the eight question uh, that uh, uh, the, the project give us and tells uh, this this people to answer uh, the question which prefer. Um, so these are the answers from the student and uh, the technical expert of the staff of University of Pavia. Uh, at the question how to create user engagement to increase reuse and develop, develop 
development of OER in collaborative setting, the students answer that the university should let the students know more about these tools and give the possibility to use them during courses. While the technical expert uh, says the, the development and uh, reuse of OER must necessarily pass by the joint commitment of governments of nations. Um, in order to found organization and certificated consortia to produce international standards that can bring OER to be truly reusable. Um, why do you think people hesitate to create and share OER? Um, the students tell the people uh, fear of sharing wrong things and uh, they uh, for search uh, uh, for a financial reward in their their works. Uh, while the technical experts says that small individual interest and the lack of culture in the new media and the new digital world, especially in Italy. Italian teachers are for the most part very uncooperative, jealous of their work, studies and research, so they prefer um, not to create and share OER. Uh, which tools allow don't, do not allow to reuse and modify OER. Um, the students use wikis for research and studies, um, but all sites uh, that allow, but also all sites that allow download of material. Uh, the expert, the technical expert, says that if uh, we refer to intellectual tools, um, then he can tell laziness. Um, if we talk about uh, technical tools, he is sure that uh, EX uh, learning has developed the ability to make the OER reusable. Please, Marius. Sorry, I think you are now presenter ah, yes, also. You I should have. either, but I have. yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I'm sorry. Um, the, have, have you uh, used OER for learning or teaching? Uh, the students have used as has used the um, OER uh, for study um, for learning, so uh, to integrate traditional learning material. Uh, the technical expert has used the OER uh, in the development of a computer course held at the Faculty of Medicine at the University of Pavia. Uh, who would you share your ideas with? The students usually share idea and materials with friends. I part uh, he participate in blogs and web discussion on social media. media. Uh, the technical expert says that uh, the ideas should be free, uh, so uh, should always be shared. And the share of ideas disregards from the personal, cultural, cultural and religious sexual condition, tagging everyone, but starts from much further categories from that uh, Platone would call objective form. Uh, how to best express new idea and innovation? Um, the students that in place on the web accessible, uh, in places on the web accessible to all. Um, in that way, uh, in order to give the opportunity to share the material and gain, and gain advantages in a reciprocal manner. The technical expert says that the cultural context that surrounds us is crucial. The support from those who think like us uh, then is crucial and for this reason in an um, you know, homogeneous context but open to dialogue and discussion. Ideas can certainly have a greater trust. Uh, but obviously, uh, there is a need of the will of, uh, go of the government that can economically, um, um, sorry, uh, con uh, that can economically um, stimulate cultural uh, tissues to be more uh, uh, competitive. Um, these are uh, the answer of, these are the interviews from the University of Florence. I and Laura Menichetti collaborate to interview a full professor, a, a technical a expert of the technical staff uh, and a student and librarian 
from the University of Florence. We gave uh, the more sophisticated uh, uh, question to them, and uh, these are their answers. Um, when we ask how to create use engagement to increase reuse and development of OER in collaborative settings, the professor tells us that, tells us that uh, um, it is possible to create use engagement in each department, so uh, where people share goals in terms of knowledge and in terms of time, uh, because uh, um, uh, at the institutional engagement, such as the University of Florence, will be very uh, complicated. Um, it he, um, imagined that it could be possible to create small modules re reusable in different contexts uh, that could be very useful for uh, professors and teachers um, not wasting their time. The technical expert uh, and uh, lib librarian and student, student uh, tells that uh, he, the, to create a user engagement is um, possible only if the institution wants it. Um, and uh, they notice a lack of information about uh, um, OER. Uh, and about uh, about OER, uh, they learn also um, both of them uh, think that uh, it, it it will be very useful useful uh, to organize and propose training courses. Uh, why do you think people hesitate to create and share OER? Um, for the professor, uh, the professor uh, thinks that uh, Italians hesitate to create, use, and share OER because of their language. So it is a problem of language. Um, for the uh, technical staff, uh, it is a problem of information, of uh, culture, because the, uh, she says that there is no information about OER and there is no collaborative culture. Um, the librarian also uh, thinks that uh, people hesitate to create and share OER because of many reasons. Uh, for example, evaluation don't like reuse of resources, people fear of exposing their work to, to others and of being copied. Uh, they don't know very well copyright and copyleft, and there is no time and no support from institution to create OER because institutions don't recognize the values, the value of the initiative. So they don't waste anything uh, in that direction. Uh, which tools allow or not allow the re to reuse and modify OER. Um, the professor thinks that the technical tools are not very important uh, because we already know what they are and how we can use them. Uh, he thinks that uh, are more important the competencies in modifying and assembling OER. Um, because um, he thinks that uh, at the moment is more flexible uh, copyright than copyleft. Because we know uh, the limitation of copy, we know very well the limitation of copyrights, and um, we don't know very well um, limitation of copyleft left because um, there are ambiguous consequences. Um, the technical ex expert says the open sources tool tools allow to reuse and modify OER, such as the learning pl pl platform and uh, CMS. Um, there are also other collaborative tools, uh, um, such as Wiki and uh, other software open source. Uh, the library also uh, is aware of uh, the opportunities that open sources um, software are offered by the, the web. 
what context would help users to start collaborating on idea development already? Um, one person doesn't answer to this question. The technical expert says that the ideal context uh, that would help users to start collaborating on idea de uh, development could be the one uh, where the OER concept is uh, well known. Um, the library uh, thinks that uh, all wikis and social network uh, could be useful in that direction. Uh, how would you explain the emotional relations relationship with it, between the creator of OER and uh, the artifacts that they create? Um, one person tells us that the artifacts are dyna dynamic, so um, the creator constantly should modify them. And uh, this is not a problem of uh, emotional relationship, but uh, an epistemological problem. Um, the technical uh, staff thinks that um, uh, it is quite not natural and normal to um, feel this uh, kind of emotional relationship uh, between the creator and the artifacts that they create. Um, but this is not due only for the satisfaction of having created some, something, but especially for sharing the artifacts with others and for being responsible versus the world, the world who is going to use our OER, the, uh, the OER. Um, uh, for the library is uh, doing something for the benefit of our community. When Professor uh, Paolowski argues that collaborative OER development can be fostered by creating emotional ownership, um, we ask uh, these people uh, what, uh, when do they think intentional and conscious feeling uh, can be better created. Uh, one, person, one person don't answer, um, the, the technical staff thinks that collaboration is fundamental to create the feeling of ownership, of emotional ownership. Um, the ideal context within this feeling could be created is the one where the owner is well motivated to cooperate and collaborate. And finally, the uh, librarian and student of the University of Florence thinks that the intentionality is really necessary because it can further energy and serendipity in that direction. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, again, I see a big job done and uh, I'm very, in fact, impressed about the level how questions are perceived in, uh, in universities in Italy. I think um, our teachers and even staff members uh, would not have answered uh, such, uh, I would say, considered the answers already. So I see that you cannot hear. Livia can hear again and, uh, and uh, I hope Ramon you can also hear now if somebody has problems. Problems, you should you should write in the chat. So thank you very much. Uh, it was impressive indeed. Uh, thanks a lot. Uh, thank you, Sylvia, for presentation and um, and Marus as well. And I see that Paolo was beside you. So uh, thank you. Let's move on. We are already a little bit uh, short of time, but mm, let's catch it up. And we have uh, group number one who preferred to present the last ones. So I hope now that is, that is solved all technical problems and maybe group number one can get on, on with your cameras, microphones and do presentation. We're waiting for you. Hi, can you hear me? 
Yes, we can hear you and we can see you. So you are fine. The floor is yours. I see Livia is joining. Uh, Anna, Egidius, Livia, Samuel. I don't see if all of you are here, but at least we see Livia is trying to switch on the webcam. We don't see you still, Livia. Yes, I have a problem with my cam, but I can speak. Okay, good. Perfect. So, the others? Uh, the others, I don't know. <laughs> okay. Anna. Anna is hiding somewhere. Egidius as well. Let's see. Okay, so the floor is your, yours, girls. So, you go ahead. First of everything, I want to apologize because I have some troubles with the computer and I'm losing the connection sometimes. So, finger crossed <laughs> to not interrupt the presentation. <laughs> and, well, in our presentation, we decided to interview uh, one professor and one student from all universities. Um, from Lithuania, uh, Anna interviewed one of her professors uh, there in Lithuania because she's there in an uh, Erasmus program. And this professor is female and she's from the educational department. And the student, I think, is also a, a female. Um, but is from his home university in Spain, but is also studying education. Uh, from Italy, Livia interviewed one of, of her professors uh, in Italy, who is specialized in media education, and the student uh, is from communication. Um, in Spain, I interviewed one of my professors from my degree, which is English studies, but she was specialized in, in teaching languages uh, such as English, uh, but to teach uh, languages as a second language for students. Um, and my student was a male, and he was he just finished uh, a master's degree in which uh, he specialized in open educational resources, uh, particularly of MOOCs. Uh, our, mm, our answers are all together because uh, we discovered that even if they were from different countries, the answers were pretty similar in between them. So, uh, yes, now, um, the first question when we ask, have you used uh, open educational resources for learning or teaching? Basically, uh, it was the same answer for everybody, uh, yes, for learning, researching, and professors for teaching. And the main OER, uh, the main open educational uh, resources were wikis, virtual courses, model from the universities, and social networks. Mm. In the net one, in, sorry, in the net one, uh, what does it take you? You feel ownership for something? Uh, Basically, we put uh, the different answers, but uh, mainly they, they say that mm, they feel ownership when, they, when you can share it. Um, and manage the information. But, and you can improve that information, when you uh, put something in that information from you, uh, you feel that ownership. Um, 
And the next one, when they say, who do you share your ideas with? Uh, basically, they say with everybody who is interested in those ideas. Uh, one of the students said that if they are more technical ideas, uh, for for example, an, an, special, uh, uh, an a special field, for example, I don't know, ID that not everybody understands, you can share it only with the people who is interested in IT and specialized in IT. But uh, mainly uh, uh, with anybody willing to make you good use of it or which are interested in, in those ideas. Um, yeah, um, the other students said the same that the professor. In the question, how to best express new ideas and innovation? Mm, the, mm, we get uh, we got uh, different answers, but mm, the main idea that they share is. Uh, we, uh, through, conven through conventions with uh, expert people in the in the field to improve and to innovate and create uh, new new ways to express the, uh, those ideas. Um, and where will you share? We were not pretty sure if this question was about a, a specific uh, social networks or open educational resources in general, but we took it like a very open question. So we let or in the people we interviewed to answer whatever they want. So, for example, one of the um, of the professors, I think it was the one from Lithuania, say that she will share it, she will share it in the faculty and especially in the Department of Education. She is studying, she is teaching there. Um, but uh, the other teacher, we. Uh, which is from Spain, said that it depends on the content because every content requires a different way to share, a different way to share it. Um, students, um, well, some of them say that through convention or a specific exposition. Uh, um, other ones uh, took in if we were referring to online or websites or they they said that through forums or university pla platforms are available on the internet. Um, again, with the question, which tools do you use? We live uh, or interviewers uh, to interpret the question whatever they wanted. Some of them uh, gave us a specific answers, like for example, short videos on Tumblr or videos and spots on YouTube. But most of them answer answer it uh, openly. Uh, like they said in the on the internet very generally or others say in specific forums, university platforms, uh, conventions, computer programs. Um, <clears throat> and with the um, more difficult questions like how to create uh, use engagement to create, reuse, and development of 
open educational resources in collaborative settings. Um, open open licenses. Uh, I think was the idea shared between professors and students. Also, um, organizing uh, courses to explain to the rest of the community what. Uh, what are those opening educational resources and how do we use this for teaching or for learning or for researching? Mm -hmm. And when, when we ask them, why do you think people hesitate to create and share? Mm -hmm. Some of the teachers, some of the professor uh, said that uh, because of cultural limitations, but I think uh, we think the main idea was that fear of losing control. That when you share an idea, you don't have uh, any power uh, on that idea anymore. Uh, anybody can copy and share the idea and modify that idea. Um, also, you have a, a responsibility. People can criticize your idea or can use it uh, in a wrong way. And also, the another main problem is copyright, which is related with all the Which tools allow do not allow to reuse and modify open educational resources? Well, mainly again, uh, copyright. Copyright was the main answer to this question. Uh, the limitation of what you can do or you cannot do to share information or to modify. Um, also, uh, this is a new uh, open educational resources are really new in um, nowadays, so many people doesn't have uh, enough information about how to use them. So that's what it means, absence of standards. In the next question, mm, uh, what context will help users to start collaborating on idea in development already in an earlier stage of open educational development? Well, uh, basically all the professors said that formation and organization are the main are the main the main key stage to develop an open educational resource. Um, students said that um, well that a young and innovative environment with the students because uh, students want uh, to be a to be part of that, of those stages, to know better the, those opening educational resources, uh, and they they think that the university is really really important to develop open educational resources, but all but always taking into account the students, not just uh, professors or PhD. Um, and uh, when we ask uh, about the emotional relationships between the creator of, of open educational resources and his or her collaborators, um, well, uh, 
some professors mm, just answer vaguely the same that it depends very much on old. But uh, others uh, were more precise and answered that uh, there is a read that there is a lack of gratitude in um, some places or and or the can feel um, the student uh, well we have two different opinions the first one uh, that the emotional relationship should be overcome so it doesn't become um, an obstacle and the other uh, the other one was the parental, parental relation that uh, which means that uh, the idea that you have shared is like a son. Uh, you you have to raise to raise him, like to develop and improve that idea to share it with the community. So uh, in the end, uh, people can can be sorry. Can use that that idea to improve society. So it's like a human being. You are in society to help and to improve uh, society. So it's the same with those ideas. Um. Um. I think is it the last? No. Uh, when, uh, when is the question? Uh, when do you think intentional and conscious feeling of emotional ownership can be better created? Mm, all the students said that working on together as a team, there was no different opinion. Um, professors said that mm, awareness, team, honesty, and making known other and um, also engagement and um, um, providing very that it is something appealing to the in the first place. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, okay. Because I, <laughs> I, I couldn't uh, hear anything, so I thought I was lost in the connection again. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it's okay, it's okay. <laughs> uh, we have some problem with this question because uh, people have to read uh, the article from. No, it was this or this one? Yeah. Sorry, this one. Uh, people have to read the um, the articles from Wolf, and some of them didn't do it, so we only got a couple of of answers. But uh, well, that's all with the question. Um, the conclusion we we arrived is like open educational resources understand are starting to be used in European universities and the departments are normally those dedicated to education. But open educational resources are not as important as traditional methods for teaching because even though many professors know about them, they don't use them. Um, they don't use it to his whole potential. And when I say uh, open educational resources, uh, I mean other platforms different from the model used by each university or faculty or department. Because here in Spain, for example, I think everybody uses uh, SWAT, which is a model to upload documents. But beyond that, there is some on professors that mm, anything. Um, 
also that students at, uh, are not aware of how open educational resources can improve the learning experience, but they want to get involved because they think they are interesting and they can improve uh, their their learning experience and also they can help with research. Um, I think that, oh, thank you for your attention. Everyone. Thank you, Beatrice. Thank you very much, the whole group. Uh, I am not sure, maybe somebody from group, I have Olivia, who is online with a microphone, could add something or uh, comment on how you did with this collaboration. Maybe you can add something to this. Uh, yes, um, I would like to say that the most difficult things was uh, understand what OER are because uh, some people tell me OER are what uh, people can modify knowing the code and the source code and for somebody else uh, OER was all internet such as YouTube, uh, Facebook, uh, SlideShare so it was difficult to find uh, um, um, an interpretation for this and then I was surprised because uh, I discovered that there are uh, many gerus uh, um, for what uh, we create and I, f I thought that it was an Italian uh, um, approach uh, but uh, I today discovered that it is uh, like this all over the world or Europe, so that it was. Yes, I think uh, I think Livia, you are right. It is not an Italian problem. Uh, otherwise, it would have been spread all over Europe except Italy. But uh, now we all have similar problems, and that is why we are discussing uh, how to promote OER, what is the benefit, and how to use and reuse OER. So you are right. Thank you very much. And uh, maybe now let's move further on <coughs> to another uh, two more agenda items for today. One.